three, two, one. Hey, what's going on, guys? Gold Meta Mouth 6 here with another episode of Sky Block Ice. And you may notice today Daniel is not with me for the moment because today is a special day and it's a very interesting day. We're going to be building our house, but it's not going to be a normal episode. Why did I do that? I don't know. It's not going to be a normal episode. It's going to be in a, a time lapse. I'm going to time lapse build my house in front of you guys because this is not going to be the whole entire episode. There's going to be another part to it. And we're in the planning room because that's where, dang, nap it, where all episodes begin because that's how I roll. So I'm going to be time lapse building this. Hopefully it doesn't take me too long because it's going to be a lot of hardware space. Daniel will probably be joining me in the in the middle sometime, hopefully. And so what... That's what's going to be going on. We have all the materials right here we need. I already got that down. We don't have to do any gathering. So I'm going to do a time lapse build. Build of the base. My hand out base. My house. So I'm going to gather up all my materials right here. This is mainly all the materials that it's gonna, I'm going to need to build my entire house. I'm probably going to need some, some more stuff, but that's... That's a lot, that's even too much. The roof stuff is gonna go away for right now. There's some things that are extra and there's some things that are not. So, I'm gonna start. So, that's gonna be a time lapse. Hopefully it's not too long. You might want you, if you wanna skip it, you can. But, I would recommend watching. It's gonna be cool. I've never done a time lapse before, but I'm gonna do a time lapse. And it's gonna start now. It will start right now, and I'll see you back when it's over. So, see you guys then. So as the time lapse begins, I would like to make a point really quick before we begin. I don't have any music to play during the time lapse, so it's going to be kind of boring. So I decided to read a kind of like a story. It's not really a story, but I would like to give a warning. The warning is this. That if you... Have anything about Santa Claus, believe in Santa Claus, I would not watch this. If you're, or I should say, if you're under the age of about 10, or less than that, or a little more than that, maybe 15. So, n right now, if, you, if you're under the age of 10, or under the age of 15, I would consider leaving now. I do not care. You can skip to the end if you want to. I am not opposed to it. But thank you for watching, and I'm going to begin the story right here, so you might want to leave right now, and click back at the end of the video. And I might leave that in the description, I might not, but I might will. So, here's what the story is. The question is, is there a Santa Claus? A physicist's view. A physicist is someone who studies uh, physics. If anyone knows what physics is... Physics is a form of science, just to let you know. You can look it up a little later, and I might describe it later if anyone wants to know. So, there are several reasons to what this means to a physicist, how Santa Claus exists. So, here's what it is. The, consider the following. 1. No known species of ranger can fly, but there are 300... 300k species of living organisms yet to be classified. And while most of these are insects and germs, this does not completely rule out flying reindeer, which only Santa has ever seen. Reason 2. There are 2 billion children, persons under 18, in the world. But since Santa does, uh, doesn't appear to handle the Muslim, Hindu, Jewish, and Buddhist children, that reduces the workload to 15% of the total, 378 million, according to the Population Reference Bureau. At an average census rate of 3.5 children per household, that is 91.8 million homes, one presumes there's at least one good child in each. 3. Santa has 31 hours of Christmas to work with. With, thanks to the difference in time zones and the rotation of Earth, assuming he has travels east to west, which seems logical, this works out to be 821.6 visits per second. This is to say that for each Christian household with a good child, Santa has one one-hundredth of a second to park, hop out of the sleigh, jump down the chimney, 
fill the stockings, distribute the remaining presents under the tree, eat whatever snacks have been left, get back up the chimney, get back into the sleigh, and move on to the next house. Assuming that each of these 91.8 million stops are evenly distributed around the Earth, which of course we know to be false, but for the purpose of our calculations, we will accept. We are now talking about 0.78, about 0.78, no, 78 miles per household, yeah, sorry guys, about 0.78 miles per household, a total trip of 75 to one half, one, ha one half of a million miles, not counting stops, due to what most of us need to do at least once every 31 hours plus feeding and etc. This means that the Santa sleigh is moving at 650 miles per second. That's 3,000 times faster than the speed of sound. For the purpose of comparison, for the purposes of comparison, the fastest man-made vehicle on Earth, the Ulysses Space Probe, moves at approximately 27.4 miles per second. A conventional ranger can run at a top speed of 15 miles per hour. Number four. The payload of a sleigh adds up to another interesting element, assuming that each child gets nothing more than a medium-sized Lego set, two pounds, I love Legos, the sleigh is carrying three, 321,300 tons, not counting Santa, who is invariably described as overweight. On land, conventionally, reindeer can pull more than 300 pounds, even granting that flying reindeer, seed number point one, could pull 10 times the normal amount. We cannot do the job with 8 or even 9 reindeer. We need 214,200 reindeer. This increases the payload, not even counting the weight of the sleigh, to 353,430 tons. Tons is 200 pounds. So you just multiply that by 200, two, not 200 pounds, 2,000 pounds. Multiply by that by 2,000 pounds and you get the total weight of the sleigh. Again, for comparison, this is four times the weight of the Queen Elizabeth. The Queen Elizabeth is a ship. An olden ship. Back in like Christopher Columbus's day. Point five. 353 tons Traveling at 650 miles per second creates enormous air resistance. This is some of the physics behind it. Well, everything is about the physics. Everything is the physics behind it. But this is some main physics. This will heat up the reindeer in the same fashion as a spacecraft re-entering the Earth's atmosphere. Any, any space kids out there or teenagers or whatever you are, you know what we're talking about. How it comes in the Earth and it burns up burns up and you have to have a heat shield and all that. The land, the lead pair of rangers will absorb 14.3 quadrillion joules of energy per second each. In short, they will burst into flames almost instantaneously, exposing the reindeer behind them and creating a deafening sonic boom in their wake. The entire reindeer team will be vaporized within 4.2 thousandths of a second. Santa, meanwhile, will be subject to centrifugal centrifugal forces 17, 17,500.06 times greater than gravity. A 250-pound Santa, which seems ludicrously slim, would be pinned on the back of the sleigh by 4,315,015 pounds of force. In conclusion, if Santa ever delivered presents on Christmas Eve, he is dead now. This... I would like to note this appears in the Spy Magazine, January 1990. And here is a rebuttal. A rebuttal is something kind of proving that it, he exists, but it's not really what you think. It gets into the more deeper physics that involved in, per se, the existence of Santa Claus. For any of you younger children out there who still are watching, this is going to hurt your brain. Because it hurts mine. And I'm in high school. I'm a senior. So. The rebuttal by E.B. Davis. 
As a result of an overwhelming lack of requests, and with the research help from the renowned scientific journal Spy Magazine January 1990, I am pleased to present an annual scientific inquiry into Santa Claus. The analysis you sent me about the death of Santa Claus based on the classical physics is seriously flawed, owing to its negligence of quantum phenomenon that becomes significant in this particular case. As it happens, the thermal velocity of the reindeer in a dry December air over the northern hemisphere, for example, is known with tremendous precision. The mass of Santa and his sleigh, since the number of children and their gifts is also known precisely ahead of time, and the reindeer must weigh in, a, weigh in minutes before the flight is also known with tremendous precision, his direction of flight is, as you say, essentially east to west. All of that, when taken together, means that the, mon the momentum vector of Mr. Claus and his cargo is known with incredible precision. An, an, an elementary principle, or an elementary application of the Heinsberg uncertainty principle yields that the results that Santa Claus' location at any given moment on Christmas Eve is highly imprecise. In other words, he is smeared out over the surface of the Earth, analogous to the manner in which an electron is smeared out within a certain distance from the nucleus in an atom. Thus, he can quite literally be everywhere at any given moment. In addition, the rel relativistic, the relativistic velocity which his ranger can attain for a brief moment, makes it possible for him, in certain cases, to arrive at some location shortly before he left the North Pole. Santa, in other words, assumes a brief period, periods, brief periods, the characteristics of a trion, taxion. I don't know what that is. I will admit a taxion remains hypothetical, but then so do black holes, and who really doubts their existence anymore? And with that, I hope I didn't ruin Christmas and the existence of Santa Claus because I feel bad if I did. But you will learn to understand when you get older, as I am, that maybe he doesn't exist. So, yeah, that's the physics. If anyone doesn't understand, quantum physics is something that Albert Einstein kind of came up with, if anyone knows who he is. He's a great physicist. He came up with the concept, but everything in quantum physics, for the rebuttal it's saying, is very imprecise and not known. You can't really know anything with certainty. And by knowing pretty much everything about Santa Claus with such precision, it's almost impossible, really, to understand how to understand where he is at one time. Yeah. Yeah, that's what, that's what it is. So, I hope you guys enjoyed. That might be funny to some, it might not be funny to some. I might read it again to make it even more funny. But, mm, I don't know. This time lapse is going on a lot longer than I thought. And it's... I didn't mean it to go on so long, I kind of was recording it for about an hour, this is why it's a half an hour episode. But, in other words, you have a lot long to go, and with my overlay device, it's only telling me I've been going for 12.1 minutes talking with an overlay, and I have about do 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 some math in my head really quick. I'm just gonna get rid of those. I have about... So the, the, the total is like 27 minutes right there. 27 minus 12 is like 15 more minutes to go, and I don't know if I can talk that long so much. Ugh. And I'm also kind of sick, so this kind of is hurting my voice, but uh, I might do a little more talking and going through what's been going on. So if you're sticking around to this, I building my house, I made this house in my other... One of my other little mini-series, the Command Journey, not Command Journey, made easy with commands as the little house you see and all there, and I wanted to replicate it on Skyblock. I wanted to replicate it on Skyblock, because 
That's how I like it, and I love how I made that water drip. I, I felt cool when I did that. But in a little bit, I'm going to realize I messed up when I built the other roof. I was really confused for a very long time. And right now I'm building the chimney, as you can see, but I struggled a little bit because I, I actually had it memorized. I made a, uh, a, a single-player flat world in creative mode. I actually built out the house in stages where I can see what was what, what. I already had the bottom floor pretty much built, but other than that, it, it, turns out, it turns out really nice. Turns into a really, really, really long epidemic. I was working on it for about an hour. And it was good I made it into a time lapse because no one would want to see this on camera. I could have done it on stream, but I haven't been able to get my stream to work for YouTube because I just got into that. And I did... It was it was difficult a little bit, but... Ugh. Whew. Yeah. It, was, it wasn't too bad. It was just a little time-consuming, I may say that, but I don't know if I'm going to figure out a way to put in some music here or not, because I think I'm going to stop talking for right now. I might come up with another thing to talk about in just a few minutes, because this is kind of getting boring. And you can see right here really quick, I'm really confused. There's supposed to be an extra gap, and what I did was I moved the thing out one, and it needed to go back in one, and I thought, oh, I moved the second wall out too far, and that, that's what happened there, and I'm going to fix it a little while later, but I will s come back a, later, a little bit later to talk some more, maybe just right after this, I just got to think of another story to tell, because I don't want to bore my viewers, because I don't know how to do the copyright thing with the music on YouTube yet, I haven't figured it out yet, but hopefully I will. So, I will see you probably in a split second.
Three, two, one, and... Dang, my voice is too beautiful. It's too loud. Oh, dang, you just messed up the intro. It's okay. Yes, he's, he's a beautiful voice. Welcome back, guys. This might actually be only the, the only episode that took a lot longer than I thought it would, and I don't think I can condense this down to less than a 30-minute video to make another 30-minute video, so I'm not going to do that. So, this is what we have. It's my beautiful house. Got my American flags, which are already there. Go on in. It's nice. I had to install a couple other things. An enchanting table, but there's all this stuff in here, so I can't do anything to that. So let's go up to the... I actually need to remove these beds because they're not supposed to be there. And remove this. I need to put that other anvil down, actually. Oh, why did I do that? Come on, I want the other anvil. There we go. The other anvil right here. I'm gonna remove that sign. So this is gonna be my little room. Got my bed. Oh, I didn't. Ah, oh, damn it. Ah, I don't have it. Oh well, I'll do that later. There's gonna be lights in this room. I still have to set up some torches. And there's my chest. I'm gonna put some armor sets all over here. They're gonna be specific armor for specific reasons. We have my workplace up here, which is this where I can brew and I'm at auto brewing station slightly. And this is the auto smell thing. I'm sorry I messed up really badly. That's why this video went on a time that went on a lot longer than I thought. Don't worry. If you're watching this, you're probably are listening to a story that I'm probably gonna have to tell really, really long and maybe make up some more stories. And I swear I just saw you walking around with a shield from 1.9, but you have a banner. But okay, Daniel, what, what's on the banner? It's beautiful. It's it's gorgeous. Oh yeah, I also fixed your door. That's the wrong door, too. You might want to open it. I just broke it. Dang no. it. I need to get dark oak. You broke the flag. Just this will first and give me the flag back. Just drop it. How do you drop it? Where'd it go? There it is. Take it. Where? I don't see it. I just dropped it on the floor in front of you, Daniel. You're oh, lagging like a mad dog. Are you lagging? No. If I was lagging, I would know. Yeah. You're lagging. I just picked up the flag again. <laughs> there we go. Okay, I am lagging. Yeah, I told you. Jeez. I'm now going to go put you. On the American side, you're the British side. We've decided. There we go. British. British people. British. So that's Stand my back. house. Oh, he's back. That is the house. The We're funny gonna... thing is, I'm no way re related to any British people. <sighs> so what do you think of the house, Daniel? It's a lot better than the last sky block. Don't, mm -hmm. don't, don't tell me. It's a double box, but it still looks better. I'm probably going to put some balconies in, too, but I don't have time to do that right you now. You know, it's, I think it's still missing something. It's it's as not as big as the last one. What are you doing? No, but I, I still think it's like something. You're not putting something on the roof. Oh, don't worry. I, I, I need a stick. <sighs> my God! What drive space can't handle this? Whew. Hold on, I'm going to the shop. I'm lagging up a storm. My gosh, Daniel! Just stop lagging. It's just—it's just that easy. And let, let's buy some of this. Okay, I need to find a crafting table. What are you doing? Gosh dang it. Uh, it's almost over, guys. It's almost over. Oh, okay. To the planning room. To put down two more signs. We gotta get those signs put down. As you can see. Okay, I did it. Hold on. As you can see, there are two signs right here. Complete the building, the plan room. I spell building, built, as in built, instead of building. So, we'll say complete. And then the project was finished. 
Gold's house. And done. And that's where all the stuff was. And okay, this is our next project. I think what? I finished it. What I is knew it? What it was missing. What? It was missing a bunny. Did you put a bunny in my house? No. Oh, I, I can't handle this. I can't open my door because of you. I can't open my door. No. Get away. I'm not. No. I can't even walk through. No. Go we'll walk through now. I'm sorry, Daniel. I have to get rid of the bunny. There you go. Oh, oh that's funny. Okay, well. Oh my gosh! <laughs> Okay, guys, I was gonna do that. Do it for the episode. I'm gonna really quickly show you our next project. Hopefully, unless we think of something else to do, we might actually start installing the iron golem farm, which will be so nice. Oh, there is some lag on the server, and it's in here. We're gonna be building a farm. I do not support violence, Jeremy. Oh. What? 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 I I. I don't know anymore. <laughs> so that's what we're going to be doing in the next episode. We did a lot already. I'll really quick show Daniel's house. Because that's the main thing he's been working on. And then that's where the episode's going to end. These heads keep changing, man. The heads keep changing. Should you show them the nether? No, not right now. That'll be the next episode. We've, done, we've gotten some skeleton spawners. This is Daniel's house. It's so nice. Can you my house? Yeah. This is his house. Look, house. At, look at this. This is his house. It's amazing. It's amazing. It's really amazing. It's really nice. I like what you did to oh, the scary you, face. You should show them the back. He has a secret. Donna. Donna. A secret oh, closet. Right. Oh. And here's his secret closet. But then you're like, hey. And you're like, fight favor. And you're like, who? You're like that. You probably already saw that in the time lapse, but. That's, oh, you did see the house in the time lapse already, so it doesn't really matter, but I just get to describe it. And here's our chicken farm. But, that be that. Daniel, get over here. I need a picture with you. Okay, tell me when I'm over next to you. Okay, you're over next to me. Right here. Thanks for all for watching. I hope you all guys had a good day. And, I hope you guys have a good day, and we'll see you later. And now, start spewing steak! Spearing steak! Spearing steak! Spearing steak! Goodbye!